Hello, everyone. Ah, shoot. Ah, excellent. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about differential equations. And hopefully you've uh, uh, you've seen the assignment. It's a lot of physics in this assignment. Apologies, it is called differential equation in physics. So um, there's going to be a lot of physics. And uh, yeah, so type one, if you have done differential equations in school. Type zero, if you haven't. Uh, so where would you see the assignments? So that's a good question. On Canvas. So you should be on Canvas. Uh, so if you go to... Dashboard. Student view. Okay. So this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you go to can uh, to Canvas, you will see your um, assignment. So assignment for some meeting. Okay. First meeting, May 12th. So maths 1303. This is your third assignment. If you click here, you will see, download the file here. So this is the file in question. So I'll sh chat. Here's the assignment. And if you change this to physics, physics, give you the physics assignment as well. Okay, so back, differential equation, differential equations in physics. So um, I'm going to start very basic. Okay, so if you are, if you know your differential equations, you might be better off watching my last year's, um, last year's webinar, where I go in, um, when I go in slightly um, harder stuff. Today I'm focusing on, well, at least on the first half of the session, I'll focus on very basic stuff. So equations. Equations is when you are looking for an, an unknown something. Okay, so in general, equations uh, tend to look like, um, for example, three, multiplied by something unknown, minus seven equals six. Yeah, that's an equation. And this has, equation has a numerical answer. And we know that this is called, is called a linear equation because it only has x squared. Then you have quadratic equations, three x squared minus six equals zero. That's a quadratic equation, it has a solution. So you need to find x. In a differential equation, so normal equation, so normal equation. In differential equations, equations, well, they contain derivatives. So for example, um, y prime plus three equals zero. That's a differential equation because y, y because uh, it contains a derivative. Or y double strife minus y prime 
plus y is zero. This is another differential equation. So a differential equation contains a derivative. And the aim is to find the original function. So here, your aim is to find x, x, which is a number. x is a number. Whereas here, you need to find y, where y is a function. OK. Uh, let's modify this slightly to uh, OK. Would you even need to find a differential equations form something? I'm not sure what you mean. Differential equations from something, I assume, but I'm not sure what, what, you're, what you're saying, uh, if you, if you uh, elaborate. So let's find a function that is suitable for, for this one. Can you think of a function which will solve the first equation? A, y plus three equals zero. Ooh, Andre, thank you. Yes, minus three x plus c, true. So y, well, let's say y equals minus three x is a solution. Y equals minus three x plus five is also a solution, a solution. Does everyone understand how this is true Do, on a scale of zero to 10? Okay. Can anyone think of a solution for B? Uh, so in general, uh, Y equals minus three X plus C, where C, is any real number, is any real number, is a solution. And this is, we say this is the general solution. So this is what we call the general, general solution. Okay. Can somebody think of a solution to B? Ooh, Benjamin, very good. Absolutely. For B, you can say y equals e to the power of x. Let's test. If y is e to the power of x, then y prime is also e to the power of x. And y double prime is also e to the power of x. So what we have, we have y squared, so, so y double, double prime, so y double prime, that's e to the power of x minus two multiplied by e to the power of x plus e to the power of x equals zero. And this is true. So y equals e to the power of x is a solution. Right, let's do some, some more examples. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, I mean, only two people have been answering my questions, but hopefully, um, hopefully you get it. All right, so, so a differential equation is where you are looking for the unknown function that fits the equation is a solution. 
Okay, so more examples. Well, for example, um, y prime is equal to seven y. Can somebody think of a solution to this? Well, this is a differential equation, right? Can somebody think of a solution? When we say solution, we're searching for one solution. We're not searching for all of them. Just any solution will do. Y N. I'm not sure why 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 N is that a mistake or did you mean to put N? Oh N yeah absolutely it would, would yeah absolutely yeah it does work solution uh well yeah for example E so Y e to the power 7x. That's a, one of the solutions. Can somebody see why this is true? Do you all see, does everyone understand why this is true? Yeah, it is a constant. I understand what you meant. Yeah. Solution. Um, is there anyone who doesn't understand? Okay. Come on, uh, don't be shy. I mean, if you don't understand, please let me know because uh, it's gonna go, I'm gonna go towards harder stuff now. Oh, soon, soon enough. Okay, a very some some uh, very famous uh, equations. Um, what about this one? Y prime prime is equal to minus nine y. That's a tricky one. If I can ask Ben to. Uh, wait for for somebody else to give me the correct answer. Can somebody think of a solution to this one? e to the power 3i. e to the power 3i is a constant. e to the power 3i is a constant, so the derivative would be zero. You mean 3ix, e to the power 3ix, yeah. In uh, complex numbers, yes, but uh, can you do without complex numbers? Can you think of a function without using complex numbers? Well, Okay, let's make it simpler. Ooh, Edith, very good. Uh, yeah, but you don't need, no, e to the power three x doesn't work. So try. then y prime is minus three x three x. So this does not work because this is minus and this is minus. 
So that means that y double prime is 9y, not minus 9y. So it doesn't work. Yep, uh, Andre, do you see why? Now, uh, Edith, try y equals cos minus 3x. y prime is going to be minus 3 minus sine 3x. So that is 3 sine 3x. And y double prime, oh, minus sine minus 3x. Then y double prime is going to be minus 9 cos minus 3x. Oh, wow, it does work. <laughs> Works. Works. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a solution. Um, Buren Navan, yes, sine minus 3x, y equals sine minus 3x also works. And y equals cos 3x also works. And y equals minus, uh, so sine. 3x also works. They all work. Uh, well done. That's uh, it's, uh, that's impressive. And um, in general, you can say that y equals a cos 3x plus b sine 3x. This works. Let's let's confirm that general solution. general solution. Okay, so let's let's confirm that this is in fact a solution. Solution of y double and y. So I'm finding y prime is going to be 3a sine 3x with a minus plus 3b cos 3x and y double prime we, derive, uh, we differentiate that again is going to be minus 9 a cos 3x minus 9b sine 3x, which is the same as minus 9 open bracket a cos 3x plus b sine 3x. And remember, this is y, so this is minus 9y. The third assignment has been released. It's on Canvas and um, the chat, it's in the chat as well. So please have a look. In, if you scroll up through the chat, it should be there. Or if somebody would be so kind to copy it into the chat. So hopefully you understand better what a differential equation is. A differential equation is a equation which contains derivatives and you need to find the unknown function. How do you solve from the equation to the solution rather than vice versa? I couldn't integrate lin y I got before.
Well, this doesn't. This one doesn't integrate. You can't. Uh, there's, there's no, um, there's no direct method. Like, you need. There, there are methods, or there are different methods, and there are massive books written on differential equations. I think I'd have at least two different books books on differential equations. They're <laughs> they're large. Different different solving differential equations is an art. So yeah, you can't you can't do it directly. You need to you need to know the method for solving second order differential equations. So I, if you want to look it up, it's actually in the it's it should be in the A level syllabus in the A level further math syllabus, solving second order differential equations. Okay, problem two. Now, now let's get closer to physics because maths is maths, and physics is somehow different. Somehow different from math, but uh, in very, very, very often not. <laughs> so, equation of simple harmonic motion. Let's have a look. What what is this is equation of simple harmonic motion? Does anyone remember what's the equation of super simple harmonic motion? Ah, thank you, Edith. Yes, acceleration is minus omega squared x. Um, and I'm just gonna write the other one, the previous one, y equals minus nine y, y double prime. Um, this can be, this can be uh, written as accelerate, well, acceleration is, the derivative of speed, yes, is the derivative of velocity. Omega squared x. But velocity is the derivative of, of x, of the position. So it's gonna be d dt dx dt equals minus omega squared x. So this is the second derivative d squared x dt squared equals minus omega squared x. So in other words, it's x. Now, when we differentiate with time, we don't use prime. We use dot. In this case, double on dot. So when we have y prime is dy dx, typically. And when we use y dot, that means dy dt. This is just a convenient way in physics that we use uh, some in maths as well. So x double dot, this is the second derivative, is minus omega squared x. And uh, well, compare it to y double prime equals minus nine y. Let's replace nine with three squared. And it's the same equation, right? You see that they're the same? So this is an equation of superharmonic motion and it is a differential equation. Yeah, does everyone see that they, these equations are, are in fact very, very much alike? Is there anyone? Uh, yeah. Please ask me if you're, if you're, if you're confused. Now, um, but I did say I'm going to go quite basic in the first half of the session. Uh, right, so where? Prove that there are no other solutions uh, for, for this one. This, oh. Uh, I guess you can do it by contradiction. 
uh, third assignment. Can somebody po please post a link to the third assignment? Uh, it's up there. No, it's not. I haven't posted it there. So that's the wrong link. I've in it's in the chat. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, right. Um, will we cover second order differential equations? Not really. Not really. Like, uh, you won't do that in school. So I don't see a reason why we should be. We need to do it now. Um, this is this is more. We we're, we're doing differential equations. The one the ones that you that would really help you with physics. So I'm, it's kind of you. You almost got two physics assignments uh, this time. The solution, solution to this equation is minus omega squared x is x equals a cos omega t plus phi which is which is a familiar solution where a is the amplitude amplitude omega is angular velocity uh, angular frequency frequency and uh phi is the phase starting phase starting phase Right, so let's see if it works. The first derivative is going to be minus a omega sine omega t plus phi. I'm using the chain rule here. Using the chain rule again is minus a omega squared cos omega t plus phi, which is in fact minus omega squared a cos omega t plus phi, which is minus omega squared x. That's pretty cool. Um, now, to, to understand what a phase is, basically, if you have a pendulum, a pendulum that swings back and forth, if this is your, if this is the x axis, so x, this is zero x, this is maximum, a. My, the maximum displacement from the from the uh, equilibrium position is a, and the minimum is minus a. Okay, so to find um, to find the phase, you can uh, use t equals to you find t equals zero, for example. You find t equals zero, and you see that well, in fact, so x is equal to a cos omega t plus phi. If at t zero, x is a, so if you are here, if you start from here, if the starting point is here, then uh, a equals a cos omega t plus phi. So what is phi going to be? Zero. Well done. Yes, phi is zero. Phi is zero. So here, phi is zero. Because and if you start here, you start swimming from the other extreme position. 
That means at t equals zero, x is minus a, then minus a equals a cos zero plus phi. That means phi is not 90, but close. Minus one, cosine is minus one. Cosine phi is minus one. So here cos phi is one, and that means phi is zero. Here cos phi is minus one. So phi is one. It's, <laughs> that's the easy bit. is pi, yes, of course. So pi. Uh, so if you start from here, your phase, initial phase is zero. If you start from here, your phase is pi over two. If you start from here moving left, that's gonna be pi over two. And if you start from here, but moving right, it would be three pi over two. So this is what a phase is. A phase is your initial, phase is determined by the initial position. Um, of your of your pendulum. Okay, so this is an equation of superharmonic motion. Uh, this is the equation of the differential equation, and this is the solution. Solution and equation. Okay. Derive the equation for radioactive decay. Okay, so you have you have n atoms. N atoms. And lambda, the decay constant, decay constant. Lambda is the probability that uh, that any a single atom atom will decay in the next second. Okay. So lambda depends on half-life, of course. Uh, the bigger the lambda, the shorter the half-life. And um, yeah, so the bigger the uh, bigger the So lambda is a probability. So in the next second, next second, we expect how many atoms we do we expect to decay? We expect atoms to decay. I hope everyone understands what the term decay is, right? You've done, you've all done a radioactivity. So if you have n atoms and lambda is the probability that they will, that it, a single atom will decay, how many atoms will decay in the next second? Lambda times n, very good. You expect n lambda, lambda times n atoms to decay, lambda n. And the word expect is actually has a meaning. It's a mathematical expectation is E of, um, well, you could say E of X, right? Is the expectation. Um, 
atoms to decay. So we can say that the rate of change of the number of atoms, so dn dt, the rate of change of the number of atoms is minus lambda n. Minus simply means we are decreasing. The number of atoms is decreasing. So dn, right. So we have this, this equation. And this is a differential equation. Look, it's n dot is equal to minus lambda n. It's a differential equation. So I hope you recognize it. We can think, we can, we can try to guess a solution, I guess, but you don't have to guess. You can solve it by separating the variables. It is negative because the number of atoms is decreasing. Right? D and DT, the rate of change is negative because the N is decreasing. Okay? As time goes by, the number of atoms goes down. That's my negative. So separate the variables. Separate the variables. Variables. There's going to be dn divided by n equals minus lambda dt. And then you can have two approaches. I'll show you both approaches and uh, you choose the one that you like more. Approach one is to use a indefinite integral. Integral. And approach two is using definite integral. If you're using an indefinite integral, you write down, okay, uh, you have dn over n equals minus lambda dt. You take the integral of both sides. Now here you put the integral here, but you, you don't need to because minus lambda is a constant. So you just like, do you do this? Now here you integrate this and um, it's the logarithm. It's logarithm n plus c equals minus lambda t. Because the integral of dt is t plus c, but well, it becomes plus c1 and this becomes plus c2. Then you combine this c1 and c2, which makes it logarithm n plus c equals minus lambda t. There's another trick that makes your life easier. Uh, rather than putting c here, let's put it c3 and let's make it c3. So c3 equals c1 minus c2. And here I'm doing another substitution. Uh, c3 is equal to lin c. So lin n plus lin c equals minus lambda t. And then you combine these two, it's going to be lin n c. Oh. You know what? I'm going to use minus here. No, okay. Uh, sorry, no, no, not not going to use minus. It's going to be too confusing. Like, why would you? Why, why on earth would you choose minus? It doesn't make any sense. So, um, like, I'm I'm doing like a normal human being, right? So I'm doing plus. So uh, logarithm n c equals minus lambda t. And 
here you, you do, okay, so NC is equal to E to the power minus lambda T. Right, so you need to find C, need to find, need to find C, find C. We know that when T is zero, N is N zero. N is the a, a, a initial number. So N, okay, N zero atoms. You start with N zero atoms. Okay. N equals N zero. So that means you can, you can rewrite this N. So N zero multiplied by C equals e to the power zero. So that is one. So that tells you that c is one divided by n zero. Okay, so you can finally write down the answer. n multiplied by one over n zero is equal to e minus lambda t. So n is equal to n zero e minus lambda t. So this is familiar to you. Okay. The familiar equation of the, of radioactive decay. Now. If you haven't noticed. I've made a complete mess with those C's. Uh, C1, C2, C3, logarithm C for some reason. I could have carried on just the C and you will you still have the same answer. The answer wouldn't change if I didn't do these substitutions. It just made my life slightly easier. If you can call that easier because it looks like a mess to me, like honestly. But it works. Um, on a scale of one of zero to ten, did you manage to follow me through to the end and not 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 lose? On a scale of one, have you do you manage to just understand how we got C? Understand how we got the final equation. Okay. I prefer when doing differential equations. I prefer to use definite integrals where possible. How do I do that? I do the same thing. So I literally copy this and say, okay, here we are. However, this is where the key difference appears. So N changes from N zero, that's the initial position, initial number of atoms to N, which is the final number of atoms, initial. Final. And T changes from zero to T. Like mathematicians wouldn't like it. They wouldn't, they would say, how can T change from zero to T? That doesn't make any sense. But in physics, we allow this. We say, uh, of course, we don't, we don't literally mean, so T is a variable and T is the final value but the final value can also be variable because you can take variable intervals of time. Uh, but in short, T changes from zero to T. And that's the initial value and that's the final. So N is the number of atoms at time T, which it makes perfect sense. This is the number of atoms at time T. Uh, okay, so, and that's what we put. We put here N zero n zero t so it's going to be logarithm n between limits n zero and n equals minus lambda t between limits zero and t this becomes lin n minus lin n zero equals minus lin t 
well, minus minus zero, which is lin t. If we combine them, it's going to be logarithm n divided by n zero equals minus lambda t. n divided by n zero equals e to the power minus lambda t. So n is equal to n zero e minus lambda t. The assignment three has come out, yes. And uh, there's a link in the chat, I think. There's a link in the chat. This is where the assignments are. Okay. They, but you, you're supposed to access them on Canvas. That's the idea. The assignments are on Canvas. Okay, so um, this is the equation of radioactive decay, which you are fam should be familiar with. Now, um, which one do you like more, definite or indefinite? Indefinite or definite integral? Do you, which method did you like more? Definitely, definite. <laughs> you like the indefinite? Okay, nice. Yeah, indefinite has its has its perks as well. By all means. Okay, definite integral. Look, makes I I I think it makes more sense because it, it's just it's just neater. Usually, usually neater. Fewer C's. Yes, absolutely. I came up with a lame joke. If you're a pirate, then you like the seas. The seven seas. Um, okay, so what else uh, what else are we up to? Well, there are there there, there are different different the, the different uh, things you can do with differential equations. Um, so, for example, oh, and of course, and of course, the um, uh, here, of course, you can work out, you can. You can draw the you can draw the function. So this is n versus time. So n is a function of time, and it starts with n zero. That's the initial number, and as you can see, that this goes goes down. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. That's about it. Now, I've just realized one thing. If you were to draw a tangent to this, you should get one over lambda question mark a very good a, a, a very good exercise is actually prove that is prove that the same equation applies to discharge of water from a container the same equation applies to uh, discharging a capacitor And uh, it is exponential. The definition of exponential, exponential means rate of change of change is directly proportional. 
Porsche, não. Não. To the size. In other words, uh, D, N, D, T, that's the rate of change, is directly proportional to N. That That's what exponential means, by the way, if you're not, if you didn't know. Uh, whenever somebody says, this is exponential, and then you can say, oh, yes, it is. Or you can say, oh, no, it's not. Okay, so some people, sometimes people see a graph and say, oh, that's an exponential graph. And then you say, no, it's not. For example, it starts from zero. If it starts from zero, it's not an exponential. Because if the initial size is zero, that means the ch rate of change is zero. Therefore, you, you won't have any change whatsoever. Um, okay. Um, okay. What else? Let me have a look. Okay, there's rocket size, there's the rocket equation, terminal velocity, a uh, very nice one. So, when something is falling with terminal velocity. Okay, so imagine a skydiver. Skydiver falling, falling through the air. And uh, so the forces that acting on the skydiver are mg and the air resistance. The air resistance is equal to minus kv where v is the velocity. Okay, so, or well, you can very easily calculate. If you know the coefficient, you can work out, let's say if k is 10. Okay, what's the unit for k? What is the unit for k? K is the coefficient of proportionality. Uh, so if you're falling through the air, skydiver, uh, falling. Kilograms per second. Yeah, it is kilograms per second. Kilogram meter, yeah, it is kilogram per meter, kilogram per second. Uh, kilogram per second. Well, kilogram per second doesn't really mean it. it doesn't really make, make doesn't really make sense, but it is in base uh, SI units. And you think of something kilogram. So. Kilogram per second multiplied by meter per second. Um, Newton is joule meter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. So, if the if the 
if they um if they re sorry if the air resistance is proportional to velocity square to to velocity okay what is the unit for k uh so it's kilogram per second that's fine so at terminal velocity terminal velocity you can say mg is equal to kv right they are equal we don't need the minus here because we've drawn its uh, kilograms of air displaced in a second mm, i like it i i like i like the the idea of it uh no like displaced what do you mean by displaced how how displaced how far uh it doesn't really doesn't really strike me as the meaning uh a terminal velocity mg is equals kv and you can easily work out v right so you can work out the terminal velocity from here it's simply mg divided by k and um yeah you can work out your terminal velocity based on this as well actually k is going to be different for everybody so uh okay but anyways let's find how does because how does does v change with time with time uh right so let's let's have a look so ma we you write newton's newton's second law is that mass acceleration mass times acceleration is equal to the resultant force. The resultant force in this case is memg minus kv. Okay. This is a differential equation. Can somebody tell me why it is a differential equation? Because A is derivative of V, absolutely. So it's m dv dt is equal to mg minus kv. All right, now um, actually leave it like this. It's gonna be, I can divide by m. So dv dt is equal to minus k over m v plus g now i why did i decide to no let's not let's not divide by m doesn't make any doesn't make any difference. Uh, I'm just going to rewrite it as minus k open bracket. Yes, I, st I still don't like it. Anyways, uh, no, okay, minus k v plus m g. So now I'm going to separate the variables. Separate the variables is going to be d v div over minus k v plus mg equals minus dt. Uh, there's no minus plus dt. Okay. And I need to integrate that. Now, t changes from 0 to t. And v changes from 0 because we fall initially with 0. Uh, can you cancel out K? Uh, how? No, I don't think you can cancel out K. You can, you can, you can take it out. Or what is wrong?
Assuming you start following through zero velocity. Oh, yes. Thank you. That makes sense. M dV. Thank you. M dV over minus kV plus mg. Now, now this is tricky. Like, if you're not sure how to integrate that, compare to integral of 3 dx divided by minus 4x plus 7. This is the same thing. So if you integrate this, this is going to be minus 3 quarters logarithm minus 4x plus 7 plus c. In a similar fashion, this is going to be m minus m divided by k logarithm uh, minus kv plus mg and between limits 0 and v equals t between limits 0 and t. So it's going to be minus m over k logarithm uh, minus kv plus mg minus logarithm mg because that turns to zero. And that is equal to t. And then I multiply this by k. So minus kv plus mg divided by mg logarithm is equal to minus kt divided by m. And we have minus kv plus mg divided by mg is equal to e minus kt over m. kv is equal to mg e minus kt over m minus mg. So in other words, v of time, velocity with respect to time, I divide by minus k is going to be mg over k, open bracket, 1 minus e to the power minus kt over m. And this is the solution. This is the velocity with respect to time. And if I plot this graph, if I plot this graph, that this is time and this is V. This is the terminal velocity. This is the maximum velocity, which is mg over k. Look at that. Look at that. It's We have already had this somewhere here. mg over k, that's the terminal velocity. That's the final velocity. So this is mg over k. And we got this. Time, uh, as time approaches infinity, as time approaches infinity, velocity approaches mg over, t, over k. So yeah, that's your terminal velocity. If you remember, some sometime in year eight or year nine, you were introduced to the concept of terminal velocity, and now you know how to do it properly. Right. Okay.
Um, okay. Maybe a few words about second order differential equations. We have a second order differential equation. Second order, order differential equations. Well, for example, you have y double prime minus five y prime plus six y equals zero. This is called a homogeneous differential equation of second order. Homogeneous because there's a zero on the right. Um, yeah, so that's that's what it is. We have a characteristic equation, a characteristic. Characteristic equation. There's something called a characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. <laughs> what is well? Um, is lambda squared minus five lambda plus six equals zero. So basically, we replace the derivatives with lambda and the non-derivative with one. So this is a characteristic equation. We solve the equation. We have lambda one is three, lambda two is two. So we have two solutions. And that means the solutions, the, the, general, the solution to the equation is y, equals C1 multiplied by E to the power 3x plus C2 multiplied by E to the power 2x. This is the solution where C1 and C2 are arbit arbitrary constants. C1 c2 are any real numbers so for any real number numbers this is going to is this is going to be true okay if we this is when we have two real roots if we have repeat roots let's say y double prime uh, minus 4 4y prime plus 4y equals 0. The characteristic equation is lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4 equals 0. This is a repeat root, lambda is 2. The solution is Uh, C1 X multiplied by E to the power 3X plus C2 E yes it's going to be like this so it's like this, it's um, e to the power 3x, c1x plus c2. It's like a linear expression. I don't have, uh, I'm not going to prove that. I'm just going to show you. 
you can you can you can check that it works you can check that it works for for, for yourself the, uh, that's that's how you do it the three oh two sorry not three it's two two and if you have if you have a negative if you have sorry if you have complex roots by the one prime uh, plus Six X six Y Y prime plus nine minus nine. Not so you know, minus nine. What equal minus nine? Uh, that's nine, that's eighteen. Plus eighteen y equals zero. If you write down the characteristic equation lambda squared plus six lambda plus eighteen equals zero, the solution is going to be minus six plus or minus uh, minus sorry minus three uh, plus or minus three i. And y is going to be e to the power minus 3x, open bracket, c1 cos 3x plus c2 sine 3x. It's not a very good example because what I've, I've used uh, 3 and 3. So just to show that they are different, we can... Uh, let's make this four, four and four plus nine is 13, 13. Uh, so this is four, this is 13, and this is going to be two, two, and this is two. Okay, that's how I got it. Minus two goes here, and this is two. This is a general solution. You you will do this as part of your um, A level further maths if you're doing that. Um, so I won't go any further than that. I'll leave you here. I'll leave you here, uh, and uh, hope hope I hope um, I hope this was useful. I hope you've learned stuff. Uh, today, uh, type one if you've learned something new today. Okay, well that's uh, that's great. Uh, right, yes, and Andre, I'm trying to sort you into a different group because I understand you, you can't do that the time that um, was given to you. Uh, I'll sort it out, hopefully, uh, quickly. Principle is possible. How a differential can be treated as just an integrate reasons? We're not treating them as uh, algebraic ones. It's like, a, it's, a, it's like the discriminant. When discriminant helps you, 
determine the number of roots of an equation. So the characteristic equation helps you find the actual roots of the, of the equation. Right, so when you do, when you solve a quadratic equation, you have the discriminant formula, you, it helps you find stuff. The same thing here, the characteristic equation helps you stuff. Partial differential equations. Ooh, uh, in physics, you should, uh, let me have a look. It looks it looks like the answer is no. I'm sorry to say um, they didn't make it. We had them, but they didn't get into the um, into the assignment. Yeah, sorry. Uh, looks like it looks like that's going to be a no. Also, is it possible to solve these by factoring the different, factorizing the differential equation? Well, you, you can't factorize the differential equation, can you? It doesn't factor. Like, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, I um, I, uh, I understand the sentiment, but uh, it's it's not factorizable, fortunately. Okay. All right. Well, I'll leave you to it. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for coming and uh, I'll see you next week. Hopefully we'll get some uh, some um, guest speakers as well.